Good evening and welcome to the August 24th, 2023 MSAD60 Board of Directors meetings. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll begin the meeting with our public input statement from our vice chair, Nancy Newbert. The first public input session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sections, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to, pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with the respect. This is also a time for comments as opposed to questions. And next, do we have any public input? Would appear not. Then let's move on to uh, several minutes, the minutes of June 8th uh, and July 18th uh, and August 3rd. Uh, let's start with June 18th. August 3rd was not on the agenda. It, it's been sent right. Out. So we, I think we need to not make a motion okay. to add the minutes okay. of August okay. 3rd. So that we can go to the table. Yeah. Um, so do we have a motion? I make a motion to add the minutes of August 3rd. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Passed. Let's start with the June 8th minutes. Motion to approve the change minutes. Second. All second. All in favor? Motion's passed. Right, so, okay. I abstained. Okay. Right. I wasn't here. Or I was here, but I wasn't. Uh, oh. Those were uh, okay. expulsion here. That was the expulsion hearing day. Yeah. So Josh so wasn't also, here. Josh wasn't yes. here. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I would argue that I was here. No, June 8th. You weren't elected yet. Was for the executive session only? Oh, the executive right. session, right. I, I, I'm sorry. I have to. Yes, I have been as executive session. I apologize. And moving on to July 18th. Lauren hit me up with some of the changes. Hopefully, took care of everything. I'll make motion to accept for minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? And, and accepted. And we did agree to do August 3rd. And that was the meeting to right. appoint the director for MHA. Of course. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's very yeah. Oh, one so agenda item. Right. First paragraph uh, the, after the they're there, there, there in the audience. It says this was off one. Wait, this was on the agenda. Never mind. Okay. Is that okay? That makes sense. Yep. Okay. okay. Good. <laughs> uh, do we have a motion to accept those meetings? Make a motion to accept the minutes from August 3rd. A second. Jacob. Yes. Uh, no, yeah, that's my brother. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you I better than uh, all in favor. And oh, abstention. Abstention. That's my back. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Me too. Right. Moving on. We have uh ESEA follow-up with Shannon Swagger. Right. So um at our earlier meeting when we needed <laughs> to approve the ESEA um yearly grant that we need to approve on the 18th yeah. on the 18th um there were a couple questions so we asked um shannon swiger who's our director of teaching and learning to come in in case 
um, we wanted to ask any questions at this point in time. So, so is there just questions? Or is there yeah, I think, she, yeah, just come questions. On, yeah, come on up, Shannon. <laughs> you don't have to sit in the middle seat, but. <laughs> I think there was a question about standards. Yeah. Yeah. How do we measure the 40%? Mm -hmm. um, so we use a variety of assessments throughout the year for all of our students and our Title I students. But for the purposes of the ESCA application, we use our more formal assessments, which would include our NWA, which is our local and state assessment, and the benchmark assessment. Students are assessed in the fall, the winter, and the spring. And success would depend on those end of year spring scores. We would be looking at grade level proficiency, um, grade level norms for our NWA, and our uh, grade level benchmarks for our benchmark assessment. So we would look at all of our title kiddos for Lebanon. Um, it would be school-wide for our Berwick schools. We would look at our targeted kiddos those end of year scores and see who met grade level efficiency and who met their growth expectations. So they need to meet both in order to, to well, uh, consider I've reached the standard? Uh, on the on the application, we have a growth goal and a proficiency goal. Yeah. And so so the 40 the 40 percent is yeah. the amount of students that we say successfully meet the standard. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to remember no, that. That's correct. That's right. So in order to meet the standard, do they have to meet one or the other or both? Um, it would be whatever would reach 40%. So we could have, that could be a variety of options. It's not individual on the kiddo. So, well, I could see it as, you know, for proficiency, we might be at, I don't know, let's say, 42%, like some kids might meet grade level proficiency, but they might not meet their growth goal. In terms of the ESEA application, it's not like a punitive, you didn't meet your 40%. So it's not like a definitive, you have failed your goal. It's in uh, September and October, we look at those scores from the previous year and we do our performance report and we refine and analyze, and that's how we come up with our new programming and um, interventions. So it's it's not like they look at the application and it's they want to work with us and make sure that we're really looking at what we're doing in meaningful, intentional ways. Um, so maybe one thing maybe help help. Do you have the application there, or do we have the line of the forty percent? Because I can't recall it off the top of my brain. Yeah, and, and is it? So I guess I'm is I'm asking for nuanced questions, but it's yeah. it's part of a bigger it's yeah. part of a bigger question, and I alluded to it in our July 18th meeting, um, which was we've seen the funding go down yeah. right? over the year. That's, that was what was that? over the last several years, whatever yeah. so it's, it's been going down. Yeah. And my question is that because our students are achieving so well yeah. that, that federal government feels that we don't need the money, or is that our students are not achieving well? And so they're saying, well, your program is not that good, so we're just not going to fund it. Like, which one is it? Like, related to the academic. Yeah, and we want, and then it was back to food. The food. Right. So the, food it's, reduced, it's right, totally numbers. based on the number of free and reduced students yeah. and how that's that's where the funding is. Like they they keep that separate actually from the performance itself. So if a stu if student if we don't perform at a certain level, mm -hmm. then there is a whole other role that comes in where uh, like there are there are schools that have not actually not us right now but have targeted needs and so they'll add they'll actually give you more funding to, to support increasing your proficiency levels um but the actual just esea applications are strictly based on your free and reduced numbers so just recently um we've been locked in for the next three years based on the numbers that um Agreed were agreed upon basically through the state on MSCD 60 and those numbers are a little bit lower than what has been in the past. Do you think an accurate reflection of our free and reduced population? Probably not, Josh. I would say no. I think that it's one of those things that um, this past year we haven't it, it, lunches and breakfast for free. 
So there isn't really a, a need necessarily. Right. That's, a, that's one of the things that our job as board members to be pushing back against that and say, you know what, this free thing's not working because you're saying free, yeah. but it's really it's actually costing us more. So like, those where does a lot, wash out. Yeah, that's a great question, and I don't think it's a good like. I'm not sure that I can answer that without a lot. There's a lot of factors that play into it. Um, we can talk with our nutrition director and talk about how that's impacted, but there's also <clears throat> the piece of um the relief that families have to not have to fill out those forms um so there's the and the and the fact that they can actually access that food without any sort of stigmatization so it's, it's a mix and i know i know it is. i'm trying to figure out you know as a board member yeah. right yeah. we're we're elected to fulfill these responsibilities and i am adamant that i'm not a rubber stamp kind yeah. of guy yeah. right so i ask all kinds of questions yeah. not because i Yep. I like it. So I really want to figure out how how do we use the authority, the position that we've been elected into, mm -hmm. how do we use that authority to make the changes that are going to benefit the students and community yeah. that we live in? Yeah. And there's That's the bottom line, right? So, you know, am I do I care about achievement? Yeah, I care about achievement a whole lot because that is the purpose of schools. Mm -hmm. Period. I will make that argument until I'm blue in the face. That is the priority. Everything else is secondary, right? Yeah. So am I interested in ESCA? Yeah, I really am. Yeah. Because those are the kids who we have targeted in our district, right? We've done the work and said, this is our most needy population that we right. need to move. Right. Right. Exactly. So I do care a lot about it. How are we moving? Now I'm not a big fan of NWEA. That's okay. Yeah. We don't have I don't have to be a big fan of it, right? But I are we using the main growth norms according to the NWEA? Because I know they have norms for every single state. Yeah. Do they have one for Maine? Is the question. Well, right now, uh, they just shifted. Last spring was the first iteration. So what Maine keeps doing is changing the target on us for our state assessments, huh? which makes it very challenging. Oh. So we had our MEAs pre-COVID. During COVID, we emergency shifted to MAP growth. They realized that those MAP growth does not meet the federal requirements for a standardized state assessment. I knew it. So then they had to shift and pivot and then they had to build this new main through year assessment which is which is based on map growth but in addition has a criterion referenced portion because in order to qualify um, to be federally approved for a state assessment you have to have a certain amount of grade specific questions uh, state standards based for that grade level on your test which map growth fluctuates more. In the yeah. yeah. So, so we are just living that right now for the first time, having taken it in the spring, and we will take it again in this coming spring. And they are navigating all the bumps, and it, and it's the department's not having a great time <laughs> with it. So, um, and neither are we. You know, we uh, are the ones getting the repercussions and changing expectations and are they aligned and can we measure can we compare this writ to this writ and are they comparable and they all want to do well and they make it a little challenging when they keep changing yes. our assessment that is that is so that that brings another question but i'm asking my other one first okay um so do have we written the esca grant that in such a way that it's rigorous but we feel confident we're going to be able to meet those standards that we wrote. We do. And again, this this application is specifically to support those kiddos, right? And there's a difference between the ESEA application and then how we perform Absolutely. on status. Yeah. The application is the goal. Yes. Right. And yeah. then we have to report on how yeah. well we meet yeah. that goal. Yes. Um, is, is it a plan? Will we see? Uh, will we see Shannon come back um, when we know our results at the end of the year, specifically towards this grant, okay. we can read yeah. and say, yeah. here was our right. we talked about in yeah. uh, yeah. September, yeah. and this is yeah. where we are. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, my other question yeah. would be, have, have we done um, any alignment with regard to, you mentioned it's uh, grade level proficiency levels. Yes. Yeah. Have we done any alignment with our grade level proficiency and the criteria that the state requires, like as far as like teacher grading, right? When we right. end of units, content, whatever, content tests that we're using to say the kid knows that the kid doesn't. Right. Have we done any and any look at data that would say our alignment with what's happening in our classrooms is 
well aligned or not well aligned with um, the state standards that they're expecting us to, or the or the even federal standards. I would expecting. say we've done a lot of alignment in terms of the benchmark assessment, and well, previously we did STAR and NWA. Um, in terms of content courses, if you're thinking about high school and end of even year. elementary honestly because yeah. we have to we have to report how kids are doing yeah. right, on report cards right we have a standards based report card um, so do, we do any do we do any collection of that data on a aggregate level like it doesn't have to be across the district but maybe a grade level yeah. or a certain elementary school and yeah. say okay here are what we're putting on standardized report cards yeah. here's how the kids are performing on a diagnostic test yeah. or a standardized test are they saying the same thing or are they not saying the same thing is is i think that that's a really important question yeah i agree and i think we've done that for years yes. mm -hmm. looking at those and okay. i think we always kind of want to say they don't align but then we often find that they do align because we always think that we should be we should be you know more than we are um do you agree like agree. That you find that there is more consistency than we had thought I and mean, yeah. it's just it should be because we're standards based. Mm -hmm. So are our assessments, so are our report cards. Yep. And they align with the state standards. Yep. But that's what we use to set to set our curriculum. It's the state standards. Yep. Um, we have it's always a work in progress, right, Josh? I mean we're always totally true. Like, not that we're always looking at our content. Right. Because we don't always necessarily you're always constantly revisiting and making sure that we're hitting the mark on all of our content area. Right. And I think it's a Maybe for, for me, and, and I don't mean to belabor the point, actually, your your information, thank you for attending tonight's Sorry. meeting, I just started with that, yeah. I appreciate being here, um, is to me, the state standard is the low bar, mm -hmm. right, because as a, as a district, my hope, and my hope as a, as a school board, that we're on the same page, is to right. say that that's the low bar, we actually want to exceed that bar, right. you might our, the our target yeah. is not the state, our target is beyond the state, but we we at least need to hit that and do really well on that, like that, right. that's kind of how I look at it, and it sounded like that's what you were saying, you're like, you're like no, we want to be more than, and, yes. and I, yes. I appreciate that, I appreciate that you have that. One other thing I just wanted to mention is we yeah. have, like, in the previous MEAs, really drilled down and done some item analysis or some specific topics, like, why are we scoring so low in, I don't know, algebraic thinking, yep. and then mapping that to our curriculum or grade level and realizing, oh, well, that's not taught until after, you know, so there's been all of that oh, yeah. analysis, yeah. and, it, and um, it gets very complex when they're designing a assessment that does not maybe align with the, the unit flow of a specific grade level. So we've made some shifts and adjustments, and um, right. so we've 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 done we've that deep. Yes, we have. Cool. Yeah. Well, I look forward to our next discussion about you yes. and mm -hmm. how our district goes. So thank you so much for coming tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Go home, Jerry. And I apologize for the board members for monopolizing the conversation. Please just jump in all over it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just need to remember that the state targets are forever changed. They really are. They are, which is why I think very hard to right. adapt a whole curriculum to meet, you know. And maybe one day we say, you know what, as a board, as a board, we can we can vote on these are our targets. We don't care what the state does because we know it's beyond and we start shooting those and then we don't have to jump through hoops and keep changing what we're doing because ours are static. We've said this is our target and we know it's beyond the state, you know. So because I agree, the state keeps changing things. It's annoying, you know. So I say take the state out of it by exceeding the state. And then just say, boom, this is what we're doing and we know it's beyond. And, and if we show up low in some areas, we already know that's going to be the case because we said it and we say, we know it's this year, but next year is where, where it catches up and goes beyond. Like, I think those are things that we do have the authority to add, that is actually our charge to do, that, do those things. So, um, so, yeah. So, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is uh, MS8060 webpage update and board meeting set up with Estacio Donas. Astakio, do you want to start with, can we start with the board meeting? Yeah, just that. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, first, I want to introduce myself to our new board members. Uh, although, Gary, I've seen you at some board meetings before anyways. Um, yeah. Hi, Josh. Hi. Um, my name's Astakio Donis. Uh, I'm the communications director in the district. This is my second year in the position. Uh, and I also teach fifth grade music at the Knowlton School. Um, so one of the big projects um, that I'm working on um is um 
just some of the ways that we get our information out into the community and whatnot. And one of those things is our board meetings and making sure um, like the quality of the videos is easy to hear what's going on and things like that. So we're just every couple weeks or so, we're going to make some changes and adjustments, try some different things. Like the tables are a little closer, you're a little probably comfier with people than before. <laughs> um, the microphones uh, might be changing at some point, but the biggest thing, and I'll start doing this starting now, is if you are not projecting, I might just be back here like, Doing this, <laughs> so you can see me. Yeah, music teacher, come back. My comfort zone, but um, I would say the biggest thing, the most important thing, is because our sound goes right up because it's a really tall ceiling. So really, be speaking to the back of the room, not even to where um, the audience is right here, but speak as if if someone was at the door, they'd be able to hear you clearly. Um, so there are already a few moments where some people kind of just because of the natural way the conversation works and the discussion like turning away and whatnot and um just remember you want to be projecting or if you say something to someone maybe repeat it to uh the audience so they can hear um and um hopefully we'll also change this up a little bit so they're not to your back because <laughs> we were just talking about that beforehand um see so i'm trying to make sure i don't anything podium uh we want this up here so we have a consistent way of um for like public input and whatnot uh, from now on when someone who isn't one of you comes up here they're going to come up to this and eventually i'll get that in the frame as well but we want to have those consistent forms set um is there anything i'm forgetting i think that i think that's it i think it's just not yeah i'll just be a bit of a I won't verbally heckle, but <laughs> something so you can see. Or if one of you sees that I'm doing something like that, feel free to just let them know. So, so is it important that the direction that we talk matters, or is it the volume of what we say matters? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Point in the direction you want us to talk. So, um, talk to the door. Yep. To the door. Even if I'm yeah. talking to Audra or Sue, I talk to the door. Or if you will, you could say something to them, but if it's like, I, I mean, I think I won't. I'm not too worried about how you project because <laughs> you're loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those microphones are there for to pick you up on the video. And so these should be fine hearing those conversations. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's these guys, right? It's, it's our yeah, audience. It's audience. Finding that balance to also make sure the, the public doesn't feel isolated from what's going on over here. So. That'll be the next step, but for now, it's just kind of slowly making small adjustments each week. Um, so please, I would, I'm open to any and all input, or if you're like, I feel a little uncomfortable how I'm sitting here, or uh, I keep forgetting to do this or that, like, if you have any concerns about it. Well, they say some of us, no, this, am I being loud enough? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are. <laughs> they can't hear us across the table. So if that's happening, how do we... Um, I mean, I think for one, just being comfortable, just asking someone to repeat something and yeah. speak up. Okay. Um, I think that probably the, the most helpful thing is just ask someone, to, oh, can you say it again a little louder? Yeah, because if you're over there doing something, we're not able to see you. Like you said, if we're looking in this direction, yeah. because whatever's being said is happening in that direction, yeah, it just makes it more difficult for us to see you. Exactly. And hopefully we'll, we'll adjust a little bit more, like um, someone mentioned even earlier, like have it kind of maybe... Uh, out, a little bit. out a little bit so it's mm -hmm. natural so you can do a little bit of both okay. yeah um but i think the biggest thing is just speak louder than you're comfortable speaking and honestly most of it will resolve itself i think one of the one of the things just you know some of us have softer voices some of his louder voices right so when knowing my audience is on my backside i have a naturally loud voice right Vicky? You don't. <laughs> no. Uh, no so it might be a good idea, right? Not that I'm assigning seats for you to sit on oh, that yeah. side of the room because then when you speak, at least, yeah. even though you're oh, not no. here, I'm okay on this side. I have a lot, like, this is probably the side I should sit on knowing that the audience is there. So <laughs> maybe just kind of think about that as we see ourselves. Yes. Then you can look at Robert the whole time. And, and he can tell you to listen. Are getting microphones or not? Um, I'm, I've, Bridget and I, uh, yesterday, the day before, I'm not sure anymore, but we, uh, we were in here testing some of the equipment and we might be getting some more just because three is not, it's not enough. So we'll either get more of these or just new ones is the, is the idea. And I think we consider using microphones to project within the room. Uh, that, yeah, I don't think that'll be as, 
I think we'll see if people are continuously struggling with the uh, projecting or hearing each other one, and then we can talk about that. But I don't think live amplification will be necessary. Like we talked about before at one point, plugging this in for this microphone, but it'd just be a little, just with the speech we have, it'll be like too far on the other end. Um, but that could change by next meeting. Okay. And I bet once the guest in about the podium, Please. is there something that we could put over there? Because there's people who come up and they don't say their name or where they're from. And if we could just like have a reminder there for them, because yeah. we remind them okay, yeah. if it's written out in front of yeah. them, possibly. Don't so forget. And they step up. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We can have that for the next. Yeah. Yeah. Just put it right on here for you. Yeah. That's Appreciate great. that. Yeah. that oh, great. that's a great suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Helps them. And if there's anything else that you think of, like outside of the meetings, because I know I usually see most of you at the at the meetings. So if there's something you think of in the in between, feel free to just shoot me an email. Okay. Um, all right. Now website. All right, cool. So one of the other things I'm doing, I'm just borrowing Audrey's computer because mine's recording the board meeting right now. Um, so another one of my big projects is. Uh, working on all of the websites, which we have 11 or 12 of them across the district, um, but making sure they are accessible and have the information. Is this one, is this a plugin or just a connect to? Are you asking the wrong I case? think it is a plugin. Oh. I believe. I believe. You don't have. You can cast. I I'll see if I can just cast that would be different. Plug it in. Okay, perfect. And for those viewing at home, I'm currently uh, showing the district website, which you can access on your computer. So this is uh, the Huzzy website. This has had no updates to it yet. That is what I'm doing. Uh, this weekend and Monday and Tuesday is updating this. This is what it currently looks like. There's a background, there's some photos, they have some of their core values, a calendar. Um, but the thing is, if a parent is coming here looking for something specific, that's a lot of information overload. So um, what we started doing, so I started working on the Lebanon page with the administrators over there, is um, first off having important dates for the school and a link to the newsletter uh and then across all of the pages these find it fast buttons so they can access information for transportation um student registration and then also putting up a uh an ongoing survey for community input um and then infinite campus etc and then they have a facebook page so then also their social media so people can see what's going on in the schools so community input is that for anyone in the community to go on and yeah. Yep, that, yep, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be a Google form that just someone has a sort of like public input but online. Where does Very it go? Cool. Uh it's gonna be a Google form that will go to Sue Audrey. Uh and then from there um we'll distribute it. Distribute as relevant. Uh, there's some things you probably are being like, I don't really care about like what it was, but it will be will bring you the things that make the most sense. It's kind of like what Stephanie was trying to do in the three towns, but was doing it physically with the box. a box. Right. So this hopefully people will, will add a little, yeah. Yeah. Just giving as many opportunities to get the public to yeah. contribute. Um, so this is like the homepage, some uh, coming soon because I'm gonna be putting up a dashboard tracking our strategic plan with its indicators over the years um same kind of buttons that way also when a parent has a student in three different schools it's a similar format so they can find things the same way um and then up here just this is a such a small thing but it's been really helpful is that uh there's now drop down menus <laughs> to everything so they don't have to click here to click to somewhere else they can just go right to the school nutrition site etc there's an about us page which has our mission and our commitment uh and clearly a lot of it is still under construction because it's a lot of building things from the ground up. Like, like for example, this calendar button took a couple hours to make because I had to make it on my iPad and then download in there and then upload. So it's a lot of steps that I did not anticipate beforehand. Um, but hopefully by around the first month or two of school, all of the sites will have um, 
updates. The priority right now is functional and accessible and that they can get the information they need. And then from there, adding some of the, the cool things, make it a little flashier. Um, teacher that might be interested in coming to our school district, see it and be like, oh, this is a place I want to be. That's kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. Or parents when they're moving here to see this and be like, oh, this, this district is they, they mean business, you know? Yeah. So I really want to make that really good first impression. But right now, the priority is just cleaning it up and prioritizing the functionality. So, so can we, is there a way to at least put a notice that people are visiting? Because if it's going to go through a lot of changes over the next couple of months to let people know that our website is currently under construction. Yeah, I, yeah, I can just stick like a little, like one of those construction signs. Yeah. And be like we are doing this over the years. Yeah, and I have like a goal date. Like we hope to be done our work by such such date. So it gives because then it gives someone another reason to come back. Like oh, I see it's under construction. I'm excited yeah. to see what it's going to look like come November, right? You know, something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I can absolutely do this. Come back. Um, yeah, and then one and like one thing also, um, like the board page, I'd like to have a little bit more, um, like have each of you up there, similar to our staff directory, so that people can see who's representing them. Oh, we get a photo shoot. You do? I think that is really. Um, and yeah, there's a you know dozens of other things, but I don't want to keep rambling about it. The point is. Um, Taking our time with it so it's high quality when it comes as it's going, but uh, hopefully it'll be done in the next couple months. Excellent. So, what is the significance of 2030? Uh, so, significance 2030 is, um, Sue Roger can talk about it more. Uh, Noble 2030 is our strategic plan from now until seven years from now, 2030. Um, and we just, we just honestly, we were, we typically do. Like it's either a five to ten year plan, and we were looking at twenty thirty being a really like that's that's a fairly significant number. It seems like twenty thirties. It seems like it should be that far away, but it's not. And so we hit it that way, and we're going to break down the strategic plan steps along the way, and we'll as we um, hopefully hit our goals, we'll just then say what is the next step in those things, and then. Do you want me to pull up that little? Yeah, you can. Uh, the slideshow that's going to staff. It's on the agenda next month. Oh, you can say if you it, it, it's on the agenda for next month, just so yeah, you can have the final look. We so want the final yeah, 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 yeah. You've seen a couple different iterations and updates, but the yeah. final, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's, are there any other questions, concerns? We've already had positive feedback. Oh, great. So, yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I just to find it fast thing is like, yeah. thing was I was working on it and I accidentally published it and didn't know until I come in and there were some parents like, oh, I saw the website. Oh, I see you're working on it. It looks great already. And I was like, oh, wait. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so, it was a pleasant surprise. I'm very lucky that it was a good thing. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think already to me, seeing like the changes are being made. And even if it's being made slowly, it's being made. So. Yeah. And that's a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. We've yes. been. Yes. Yeah. And plus, I mean, just like the transparency of it, and like the reality of it is, um, like this is a like a big part of my job, but I'm also a teacher. Yeah. So, and I see my kids next week. So, like, I'm doing this as much as I can while also preparing for my own teaching stuff. So, uh, yeah. I'd just like to say, not to go back in time, but the budget. Book that you did this year. I've mm -hmm. never heard so many comments. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, very much. That was great. I wanted yeah. to let you know that because that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it was so much more than a budget book. It was it an is. annual report. Yeah, yeah it was great. Really, mm -hmm. I think yeah. valuable for the community. And the core of like what I want to do with my position, and this is kind of how you also function in our school community, is being a bridge between mm -hmm. in the schools and who's out of the schools. So very excited to continue working with all of you. So anything else you think of, don't hesitate to reach out. Let us know when you're going to do the photo shoot so that we're ready. Yeah, uh, yeah I really should not come in like today. I mean, yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Yeah. The next board meeting. Okay. okay Did so you hear that? Board meeting. The, the next board meeting where something nice. That's the seventh, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ostakio. And next on the agenda is draft budget timeline. Okay. Oh <laughs>
Good. Come on. What I would like to do yes. is hand out the timeline and talk through it, but then I know there was feedback along the way during the budget process last year, so I want to incorporate some of that, but I would like to go through just the timeline itself first. Okay. 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 All right. So just looking at it, there's a lot of colors. So we tried to hit the... Um, the blue be, being more central office administrative. So Tuesday, October 3rd, we're going to have an administrative budget meeting to share the timeline and um, think about the five-year plan. We always talk about, you know, in five years, what does that look like? Um, and then the 23rd, we have um, the all of the data that goes out to the school admin and our cost centers. So our cost centers are anybody that has a budget like uh, the maintenance, you know, head of facilities, school nutrition, the library, the district librarian. So just handing out and giving out their information to them. Um, and then we have a goal setting and budget basics meeting on the 24th. And then November 27th is cost center final budget presentations at the CO. So there's a little bit of time in there that they're working on their budgets, they're getting information, they're collecting feedback from staff, they're looking at their own goals in their uh, roadmaps, and they're developing a preliminary, very preliminary, because it's still pretty early and, you know, enrollments happen and things come up. But at least there we start that process. And then the budgets are presented to Audra, to me, Sue and Denise by Friday, September 1st. September 1st. December 1st. What did I say? September. I'm not oh ready. Oh my gosh. I'm not ready. No, okay. <laughs> um, and then any revised buzz budgets are completed no later than Wednesday, December 20th. So right, right before break. January 10th, we this is again central office stuff, but we order the binders for the the board. We um, look for the first draft expenses of the budget for our review. Um, Sue, Denise, and I review the first draft expenses. We receive subsidy information, hopefully in January as well. And then we have an administrative meeting with cost center managers. Again, that that entails if we already have received some subsidy. So we can talk about, you know, what are our numbers going to be looking looking at. So by February 9th, we like our first draft to be finalized. February 12th, we start building the, the binders for the board. And by February 15th, we have the binders to the board for review and the annual report information from all of the cost centers come in to all of us at the central office so we can start putting together the annual report. Then there's vacation. And currently, this is one of the things we're going to discuss, but currently the week of February 26th, we have facilities and finance subcommittee where the administrators come in and present to the subcommittee. So they present their budgets to the subcommittee. And the subcommittee is of the board members. Right. Mm -hmm. And some administrators sit on that yeah. as well. We also, for discussion, we put this date in here because it's connected to the sub facilities and finance budget workshop 8 to 2 for cost center presentations. And we'll talk about those two pieces. And typically we have a question and answer with the board and the cost center managers. And um, that takes various forms depending on the year and depending on what we've done with the facilities and finance committee. Thursday, March 7th, superintendent presents, presents the final, to the first draft budget to the board. So that's an official presentation. So, so can I back up? Sure. Is the board involved on Saturday the second? We're going. We will discuss that and yeah. possibly. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The twenty first, the budget discussions with the focus on the decision sheet. So typically, we from the board presentation, the official presentation, and the input from the cost centers, the board comes up with a decision sheet where we either try to get more information or say these items, you know, are up to for further discussion. We would like to discuss this in more detail. From there, um, we we have several meetings kind of right in a row to address anything that's on those decision sheets and any quotes that come in or anything that we need. By April 4th, we have to have a final draft budget before you all for approval. And then Friday, April 5th, 
The information um, goes to Drummond and Whitsum, our attorneys, for the preparation of documents. April 8th, um, we meet with Estacchio to have a final review of the annual report. April 11th, the board signs um, the warrants. And the 12th of April, Betty Moore delivers the warrants and the ballots to the towns. And the annual report goes to the printer somewhere in that time, no later than April 30th. Then there's the April break. And Thursday, May 23rd is the district meeting at the high school theater. And that is where we are hoping that all of our board can be in attendance at that time because that is the that's the budget meeting. So that's the hearing piece. Um, June 11th is the district refer, refer, ref, the district budget validation referendum. The 13th would be a meeting to sign the validation of documents and assessment warrants for the town. So that's another really important meeting to have a quorum for. And the 14th, the assessment documents are sent to the towns. <coughs> so that's a lot. But what I would kind of like to talk about is historic information. And I I want to say about 10 years ago, maybe, okay. a facilities and finance committee was started at the budget level. I mean, at the, at the, the board, board level, level. Mm -hmm. simply to um, kind of funnel board, general board questions to the subcommittee and have the subcommittee meet as a facilities and finance committee to get that information and present it back out to the board. So we, um, it has ebbed and flowed depending on which board members are here and schedules. Mm -hmm. So last year we did have a facilities and finance committee and we that's that was a time when the initial part of that was that all class centers came in and they presented their budgets and then those members of the board that were representing the board mm -hmm. um asked questions um and then then we did the overview for the board the full board during that time line as well it became clear i think that we wanted more time at the full board level to go through some of that process rather than a facilities and finance committee. So that's why Nancy, the propo so my proposal would be in, and this is for you to discuss, my proposal would be to not have a facilities and finance committee, but hold that first meeting Saturday, May, March 2nd, when, when we have all the cost centers come in and everybody hears the information, the presentation from every single cost center and we do a little bit of work ahead of that to talk about funding the 279s which are some of the documents that guide that need to guide us with um, some of those pieces so that's up for discussion um like lauren you are new so what feedback i'm not going to have the titles proper right it's okay. absolutely. oh good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a lot we got the book, my, if my recollection is yes. fair. Um, we got the book, and if you had no idea what you're looking at, then it just kind of sat there as bewilderment for a week. Yep. And then we had speed dating, which is, I think, yes. speed dating. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we put it with yes. the principal from each, you know, everyone was here, and we had speed dating to ask questions. And in the following meeting, you guys explained, went through the book and explained it. Mm -hmm. I would have gotten so much more value out of speed dating. With that meeting yep. mm -hmm. before that before that yeah so like a breakdown of the book yep. what we're looking at what things are what the important numbers are where the percent comes from first yeah right and then speed dating. Mm -hmm. yes yes mm -hmm. and i think that makes sense because of the facilities and finance committee they get the snap a snapshot but that doesn't encompass all of the board members right, right. so i would hate to lose that committee though for the facilities part of it. Um, um, when we have Right, right. Get your mm -hmm. to whatever. Whatever. Good radio or furnace, whatever goes. Um, is it? I think that's something that you well, know, like, we, we can do a hybrid. Board 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 board. Board. Can we all still be invited to that meeting and like leave the committee, but all still be invited to that meeting? Mm -hmm. How did that work? Um, better if someone comes from that meeting and has a report for us on what information they got to give us the information that we need that's pertinent at a board meeting. There's a lot of different like iterations that we could create and I'm okay. we're totally open. I what I hear Nancy saying is in terms of the facilities aspect of things, 
would it be like we don't meet on a like on a it's not a it's not a um a monthly meeting for the facilities but maybe it is something that we say okay three times a year we meet with kevin and with other the other folks that are looking at just in terms of our district facilities and because we do have some issues that we need to kind of figure out which is a little bit even though it's budgetary as well but it's actually separate from the other the, the annual budget process what i also felt and i think audra is saying is that i think the board wanted more like every one of us wanted more like it, we in the past it's there's been a crew of people that have sort of filtered not i don't want to say filter because they weren't like keeping things out but just like we're able to sit on all of those meetings and then distribute the information fairly clearly i think now it's really it's complicated even more than it ever has been and it would be beneficial i think for the board to hear it all like to be able to sit in those um those uh right have cost management yes. conversations and be able to ask the questions that you have um, because each one of your questions usually triggers another question from somebody else right or answers a question um, so we we looked at here's the problem with this is that um, it has to be a fairly rapid process right when we're going through the budget um, season so th that's why looking at that workshop on that Sunday or Saturday it's a long day, but you would be able to really dig in to all of the different um, pieces, I think, of the budget. And then those March meetings will be more rich. Yeah, more because meaningful too. Those, yeah. 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 I, I, another reason that we have that committee was because we have so many meetings to approve it, yeah. it was to speed up the process yeah. and not have every person go through everything got the finance committee right but right. so and i think i think it's just i think we're at a place where in in my opinion that the more of you folks that feel super comfortable with the the deeper level of understanding of the budget the better because we're you know it, it's it's hard right you have you have to be able to go out and explain situations and you have to be able to also ask hard questions of our of our administrative team and say okay why is this and what is that and how can we do this so that when you go back out you can have a comfort level of what you're accepting and i, I would think, say oh, i'm sorry, sorry. I'm victoria I think my first year was the same thing as yeah. hers. you're looking at this budget it's it's very big it's it's a lot. you're going through it um and some people have already been through a lot of it and so when you're asking questions they're sometimes like well, it's because of this or that. And you're like, well, what are the small things that I'm missing here that I don't understand? Right, right. So yeah. that's why I'm just saying, I think that that's, that's yeah. right. Well, and to be mm -hmm. honest, we have a fairly new board. Mm -hmm. right. Like, so there's right. folks that have been on the board for quite a while, but I think Nancy, you're the, like the longstanding member at this point. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't a bad thing to, to dig in a little bit deeper. Um, Peg had been on the board in the past for many years, but it's again, like things change, right? So where I would prefer personally to do a lot of upfront loading so that you feel comfortable with the questions that you ask and the answers that you get so that we can move forward together. And I think last what we saw, not last year, but the year before, because of the, the town of North Berwick needed their documents That's much amazing. sooner. Oh, that was it consolidated that was us so fast. Yeah, that it was consolidated hard. us even more. So mm -hmm. the concern about having everybody attend all the meetings, it's pretty succinct. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. pretty- the whole yeah. month of March. Right, you're not yeah. doing it. Anything. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, no. but that's okay. I mean, that's part of the deal. Would so, that, go ahead, Josh, uh, sorry. Question and statement, the, the binder. Mm -hmm. um, what's, I'm, I'm interested in you going through the binder the first time. Is it helpful to have the binder or is it easier to have it electronically? Is it possible to build the binder electronically, like a large PDF document? I'm watching Denise back there smiling. <laughs> All right, Denise. Because um, it sounds like there's a lot of work into a binder. There's a lot of work into the whole process. Oh, I know there is. Yeah. I know there is. The, the printing part yes. of it is, is it, it, yes. it just it's often depends on people's comfortability with either online or versus paper. Right, you know. I'm just going to say, I want you to see the, I didn't want the book. I was just, I, 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 I'm the business manager for the school district. And we have had these conversations in the past. Yeah. And I think it was probably somewhere around 10 years ago where, where people were trying to reduce the paper. And we said, we'll go to an online 
format for all of these things. Um, and I think what people generally have found is that having the paper allows you to take notes easily. It allows you to take it with you and not worry about connectivity. And some people just uh, are taking more with the paper. So I, I, I think we would produce the binders regardless. I think there are lots of schedules and additional information and things like that that we put into the binders. Um, again, it's completely your choice. Yeah. Um, but I think what I found is more people than not end up preferring the paper um, just because of the complexity and all of the things that go with. But it's all created. It's all created on a computer. So certainly if you didn't want to have a, a hard copy, it's totally doable. And I would say if I were sitting here with my work from home setup of my dual widescreen monitors and could open up multiple pages at the same time to compare the page to the page, page to the page. page then electronic is great, but I felt like there were so many times where we were like, this is on page, you know, tab 32 and we're GH, whatever, and, this, is, and we, this number is, okay, this number carries over to here. And so there was a lot of like, mm -hmm. and if you get a revised, you right. 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 And and like find it was revised. Yeah. yeah. What actually was is yeah. the first review, like just to look at it, it would be no issue. Um, I personally, yeah. I mean, I, but again, at a time and I'd like it to do it on this. Uh, it's totally doable. Yeah, good question. And then the other thing is, as I agree, I, I'd, I'd rather see the full board because um, I'm sure there are questions. Um, yeah. The other thing is just, you know, I, I'm listening to it and how detailed, and it is important for us as board members to go through it in detail and understand that. Um, but if people talk to me, I mean, there's a bottom line. They don't really care about yeah. the details. Mm -hmm. They just want to know what the impact is on their taxes. Yeah. Um, and, and they, they, they really, I could explain on blue in the face mm -hmm. does not matter. Yeah. And I think that that is really important. I, it, if it's, if it's for a lot of people that talk to me and, and that elected me for that, one of the major reasons was the budget. Um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna take a pretty hard line in the budget. Um, that's I, fine. I, 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 may, I may sound like, a, <laughs> you know, I know it's a nice program. Can't afford it. Great. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, it just it is the way it is. Um, so, so, so I think for that reason, I would hate for the if if I wasn't on that finance committee, right? And for the finance committee to do all that work, and then here I am, the board meeting, just being the biggest jerk in the whole world, right? That that seems. Hard. And if I was in the finance committee, am I really representing the board? I think the questions I have are good for everybody to hear those questions, right, publicly and not in a in a committee meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that's just my opinion. But I would, I would, I, I, well, I think what all of us have said, I, I'm just adding my two cents as well. I, I, I would rather see it at the full board level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. All right. But Nancy, to your point mm -hmm. about uh, the facilities committee not letting that go, mm -hmm. that, that I definitely see as a, a separate entity yeah. Yeah. that would run that. If, yes. Okay. And then Corey, if you're not planning on already, can we think of the dollar amount per 100,000? Yes. As well as the yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Right. <laughs> so just understand we should tentatively plan on our calendar. That's what I was going to lock out March. Yes. 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 Please. So uh March second, eight to two. Okay. And we will take out the starring that date. Yes, we will take out the pink above that. Yes. We will share this electronically with you as well, just so you have a copy of that. And it is what's BBR? Uh, April 11th. Budget validation referendum. Thank you. Better to ask, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. And next on the agenda is copier lease approval, which we see yeah. prior to meeting. I know. And I believe that's we need a note for that. Right. Is that the question? It? Yes. Is that the amount that we budget budgeted? Yes. Or is that a new one? Sorry, it's finished. Good question. We budgeted. We did not have this agreement in place when the budget was passed. We budgeted sixty thousand annual payments, and this will be approximately fifty-three thousand payment over the five years. Oh, so, so fifty-three years. Here. Yeah. 
Okay. So again, th just as a reminder, this went out last week as part of your documents. You approved and the town's approved in the budget uh, this lease, and now we just need to formalize it. So we do need a motion. I have the motion, what it has to say right here. Um, are there, before we do that, are there any, Nancy asked the question about, is this above what we budgeted? And it is not. So are there any additional questions um, about the lease? process. No, no questions. Then we need okay, I'll do the motion. a motion and it's I have I have it. Okay. I, have, I moved that oh, oh. I moved that the resolution no. resolution okay. entitled resolution to authorize lease purchase of photocopiers in the principal amount of $236,655 be adopted in form presented to this meeting. Do we have a second? We have a second. Uh, second. second first before discussion. Um, there's a couple who haven't seen it yet. Can they just have a moment to look sure. at it, please? Yes. And then. Okay. So we need a second first. So we need a second. Yeah, then you can. A second. Okay. And then a few moments to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I spent everything. Maybe I'm not saying it. This lease agreement doesn't include any service, correct? I'm not reading anything about service. <laughs> We're going to let Denise answer. Um, um, so this is for devices. So it's for photocopiers, printers. Uh, it's for a software called Papercut, which allow you know allows people to print in various places. It does it. Um, we. Are charged usage fees. So we have, um, we're charged 3.9 cents for color copy pages and um, 3. Point, or excuse me, 0. 0.39, I believe, um, for black and white copies. Um, it does include maintenance. This particular, this part of it includes the maintenance. So on top of the 53,000 or 52 and change, that is your payment for the devices and the maintenance, we also have a separate bill for those per copy charges. Oh, wow, really? Yep. I just, does, our, uh, does the district staff know that? Yeah. The people who use the copies, teachers, they know the cost is 3.9 cents per color, 3.9 cents I can't, black I can't say what they know. I can tell you that we... The reason we have the paper cut is to make sure people are not printing, like hitting print and print and print and Absolutely. printing lots. And I know errors happen. So I mean, like you print something, you go, oh my God. Like there are those moments that happen. I get it. Exactly. Um, do you have any idea what the cost is just straight up for those for color black and white? Because it would be in addition to this, right? And then is that, a di is that a different budget category? It is budgeted uh, by, by school building. Um, we budget and department. So our the central office budget has an amount for paper in it, and as does special education, as does the Hussey School. And so every budget builds in an estimated cost for copier usage and and so it's paper and no the cost so of just usage. Paper is on top of that. And is that a different budget category? Is that, that is a different. It's um we have different budget codes. Like if you drill down into the, we have a separate line for copy paper okay so there's wow. copy paper and then there's then copy there's copy usage, usage, yeah. and then there's the copier lease payment which pays for the devices plus the ink um the ink is part of the maintenance oh it so is we don't have to pay for the toner um i believe the only thing we have to pay for are the staples 
that go into some of the big copier machines. I th believe those are we don't even use yeah. because right. we don't like them. Um, not machines. <laughs> that, um, if the, if the, the repair jams and can't be fixed, we call them and they send a repair. That's part of the. Part of the yeah, that's right. Exactly. So, they, so we're leasing them. They make sure that they are operable at all times. Yes. I mean, right. Right. Exactly. Okay. And and uh, and this is uh, for. Five, five years we talked about five years five years so is it a new machine coming and it's and it goes for five years or we don't have what choice machine we get we just know that they service it for five years so usually what happens when we go out to bid so this is something where we we throw out there this is what we need this is um, oh. what we need to have they usually come in and they walk through with our tech staff and they address all the things we used to um you know 15 years ago we had copiers everywhere, right? Now we have very few copiers located strategically and we have printers, more printers. Um, they go through and they negotiate. So you have different companies who have different manufacturers. So some have Xerox, some have Toshiba. Um, this uh, Kyocera, they are giving, they have put in some new machines in a lot of places, but for example, I have a printer in my office that wasn't replaced because it's they have agreed to accept that under their maintenance agreement, they determined it was in fine working order. So we didn't need to purchase another printer for me just because we turned over. Yeah, the printer somehow poops the bed, they replace it. They, yeah, so when they take it under maintenance, they're agreeing to have it uh, be serviceable and they Man. provide us a, a machine if it were to break down. I, most companies have um, a policy where if you get X number of calls on the same machine within a certain yeah. time frame, they start making efforts to replace it. And the last thing is, is, is the, um, the, the color black and white printed. Is that the same cost regardless whether it's a large photocopier or a desk printer? It's yes, whatever. It's so the desk printers don't have the option of color. It's really those big giant copiers in the offices um, that have them. And I am not certain, I would have to check, but I think that there are, are people who, if you print on that big copier, you're allowed so many copies. Mm, that's perhaps. correct, yeah, yeah. There a copy there's a, yeah, there's a, um, there's a cap. And they can then go around, you know, you, if you needed more for some reason, you can talk to technology about it, but, um, so there are a couple of things in place. Um, they also, we have a, a thing up in our corner of our screen that tells you what you've spent. And so it, like there's, if there's sort of a mindset about not copying more than you need to that's a great it's a great point i like that there's a count there yeah. does the counter stay it, green if you're good turn yellow if you're getting bad it, it tells you well it's it, it shows if you're in the red yes. like if you and then we follow up as administrators right our, our okay. administrator team yeah. falls, falls yeah. up it goes yeah Oops. Oh, so she has a sad printer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is about costs. Like, I mean, we can't print everything. And if someone's printing a lot, well, that's an indication is okay, why are you printing so much? Is it because the curriculum materials are not what it needs to be? Like, why is it? Let's have it. So sometimes it's just copiers are a really good indication of what's happening in a classroom, right? Whether um, whether the curriculum is aligned, not aligned, if there's concerns, like it's, it's good information. So having a zero balance means uh well it just depends if you've not if you've not been utilizing the copier at all. Right. Do you do you have one on your on your device? Do you have a zero balance showing or for something? I did. I closed the window. Yes. Yeah. So, I think that <laughs> right. so you're not printing, right? <laughs> I did so here you don't owe anything today. But <laughs> it's well it does, it shows. It shows if you okay. if you're printing or not. All right. It's only cop counting the copies here at school, not at home, right? <laughs> I, right, you're not printing here, right? Right, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. It's, it's linked yeah, into so the computers, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the last lease that we had, do how long was that for five years as well? Yes, and does whoever company we had that with do they have the data on our usage over those five years? On how many copies we make? Would love to see the numbers and the chart bar charts and all that. If they have that kind of data, I, that'd be fascinating to me. I mean, as it comes to budget season, you look at that, like looking at those and seeing trends, that's huge. Yep. So um, we have, what we have is we, we are billed for the usage. We build at the beginning, 
Some companies do it once at the beginning of the year and settle up at the end. Some people bill us twice and settle up at the end. But in the end, what they show is how what the device was, what what they estimated for copies, mm -hmm. what we actually used, mm -hmm. and any overage or under. Uh, is that is that somewhat what you're yeah, so, like your trends? We need to see the the year trends of of what's happening. And uh, I'm sure when's the plan of this? I just I'm just fascinated with that because. You know, it's just budget. How are things changing mm -hmm. over years? And then are we able to plan for that? Because I know, you know, as an audience here in in, uh, in, in June, when, when we move money from certain accounts, I mean, I was in the audience and I'd be like, I literally love a listing of all the money changes. What accounts were, did we have money left over? Which ones did we owe? Like, I'd love to see that list. And I, I'm going to ask for that come June. Yeah, I want to know exactly and, and it's not to say that we're going to nickel and dime budget. You, you don't do that with a budget. I, I understand that. Um, but trends are fascinating. I, I, how many has it has it been this way for the last five years? Is this always overage? Is this always overspent? Like those trends are the critical ones. And I think that that's fair to ask administrators in their building. Right? What categories have you been over in the last few years? Which ones have you been on in the last few years? How are you, how's that going to plan? Like, yeah, I know that. And I, what I will say is, that is something that we, of course, can see when you get that list. I probably have 5,000 accounts. So, oh, yeah, you, you know, because every person is paid yeah. as a salary line and other benefits, a FICA, a medical, a debt, like there are lots of categories. So finding those trends is, is totally doable. It's just you, we need to focus on what trends are you really looking for? Yeah, I think the human resources are kind of set. I mean, that is, that is, I mean, contractually, that's set, mm -hmm. right? I'm interested in the, the non contracts. And the non contracts. All right. So we'll keep that in mind as we go through. <laughs> Any other questions on the copy or lease? I'll make a motion. And we have a second. So I'll tell you both. Shall I move the question? Opposed? Okay. And next we have policy first reading approval, policy KF-EI facilities use form. Okay, that was also sent um, in the body of the agenda. We can give you a moment to take a look at it and then we'll through. Is this brand new or is it adjusted? It is adjusted. Okay. Do you know what the things were? Presented? They're highlighted in yellow. No. Oh, okay. Second. Oh, so, okay. Has there been a major frustration with facility requests? I mean, so I'll, is this being edited? I was hoping to reasons? just have you review it before I started, but I can start and then have you review it. Okay. Okay. That's my motion to approve the facility use form. I mean, okay. You need so to Matt Eaton runs our auditorium mm -hmm. and he will from time to time, not every year, but based on uh, some money that he needs to pay out for custodial staff coverage in the auditorium when we have any productions or any, you know, gymnastics is a big group that comes in. So he looks at the budget for the auditorium and he will make from time to time um, proposals to the board so that we are able to function properly, getting coverage, paying overages for our custodial staff if they're overtime and different parts like that so and and he's very meticulous about this mm -hmm. this work and the budgeting and everything so the parts in yellow are the parts that he is recommending to change or he has at made those shifts mm -hmm. there are some language parts that he added just for clarification like networking and wi-fi but really it's about those numbers and the gyms in there as well right but they also the including due to inclement weather is really um was just a, uh, an underscore because sometimes um when you have a big event planned and then we have to close school for whatever reason we also have to like clear up parking lots and do all those things and sometimes there's a little pushback from the event folks who are like well you know it's six o'clock on Saturday. Why can't you get the parking lot cleared out in time for us to be in there? And that doesn't like so. So we just put that in there to say, you know, we do have the final say on. And that happened not. twice last. Yeah, time, yeah. That we had to cancel because a Friday storm was really yeah. difficult. We yeah. knew we weren't going to be able to clear the parking yeah. lots by eight o'clock in the morning for yeah. an event. So we had to bump them to Sunday. 
These are all non-school activities. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The use of the facilities by other than school programs. And does school programming get take precedent? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as they get into the calendar, it's like some of these people have to book their events way ahead of time. So that's uh, what I was going to say. School concert won't know. bounce you. No, but we do still yeah. give priority. Yeah, we do. School. That's like you know you're yes. going to be having conferences yes. in place. Yeah, and exactly. Then, yeah, that's all done ahead. Know yes. probably what the date is in June yet. So we met. When did they meet? Uh, us music teachers yes. schedule our conference for the year in May, the year before. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. that we can have them set. Like Matt can schedule people out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who who determines whether um, whether uh, event managers are needed, uh, custodians are needed, food service people are needed? Who determines that? We do. It, there's an application yeah. form, and they complete what they need. And based on the application, yeah. Matt will look at it. And then or, Matt is the one that informs the auditorium. Then our facilities, some of if it's not an auditorium, it may be the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So school nutrition would look at that and mm -hmm. say, do you need somebody here for the kitchen mm -hmm. or the cafeteria? Right. And there's there's laws that go with it. Like so if if someone wants to utilize the kitchen, they have to have somebody on staff overseeing that because yeah, we don't want them to burn down the kitchen. Right. Exactly. And they're sort of safe and all the other stuff that mm -hmm. needs to happen. So they need to be sure that. There's the same with the custodians. If there are not custodians on duty, like on their regular shift, they have to pay for custodial staff to be here yeah. in case of an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. That's the liability of the district. The police detail, that's another one. If they're expecting a certain number of people, they have to we still have usually the town of North Berwick send an officer or officers, depending on the, the attendance. Yeah. No, that's not on you. It's not, but it's it's. But fine. it's one of the it's one of those that Matt keeps an eye on just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, on the first page, underneath the selection of what facility, is this school train personnel? Personnel? Let's be present instead of personnel. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah, we can. So this is a first read. <laughs> yeah, two this things, is a first read. Two things can happen. The first thing is, if you're all comfortable with this, and because we're not changing language, we're changing finances based on our actuals of what Matt is seeing, we can um, make a motion and approve this as part. If we're not comfortable with that, if you want your, your policy subcommittee to meet to go through this in more detail and bring it back at another board meeting, we can do that as well. So it's up to you. You don't have to have a, a second read. Sometimes it's just really straightforward and I have a question real yes. quickly. Um, what is considered a just to call this a community nonprofit and an other nonprofit? So what is the difference? difference? So a community nonprofit could be like the yeah. or, Boy, yes. Boy Scouts or yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And a community nonprofit? Uh, an, an outside nonprofit, nonprofit could be something bigger, like maybe United Way wants to utilize the facility or something. So if it's something within a town mm -hmm. and they want to use, say, okay, I'm going to say Lebanon, right. and they want to use, say, a Noble, I don't know, no, there you go, the elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a nonprofit in that community, that's considered a community nonprofit. Right. It's not, yes. Okay. It doesn't have to be school community. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yes. Right. Yes. But it would yes. also be true, right? If if Lebanon, whatever mm -hmm. Lebanon uh, nonprofit wanted to use the high school gymnasium, yes. Wow. Well, that's, that's still a community, community, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So within our district yeah. community, it's yeah. not of the building. Yeah. They're in our community. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah. And am I correct to understand that if it were possible to work with it, like if the PTO worked with the elementary school to Co-do it, it would be the schools, right? Not the mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Okay. If you're yes. putting on something for the yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. So, no, I mean Matt is amazing and he's very thorough. So I think if he wants to change his in here and feels that that'll be enough to pay, like he does a great job with what he does. So are these price hikes? Yes, they are increasing. Yes, making sure that and it's just the yellow that's going to stay. Right. It's just really the yellow. Lot and right. most of it is right. well, and then personnel. Money. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We'll pick the personnel. We'll pick the spelling of personnel. Yeah. So we need a motion. 
Uh, I think Josh made the motion. Yeah. Got it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. No opposed? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Thanks. And next on the agenda, it looks like a big one employment. It does sound <laughs> like a big one. It's like it's got a big one there. Right. But this is really since our last. This is true. Official yeah, meeting. Right, exactly. So it's, and it's okay. that time of year. It is and that we, time of year? And are we full? Like we have all our, what are we missing? No, I know that. But staff. Oh, Did you know staff? So I was in, so I had a meeting in Sanford today and I was talking to the assistant superintendent in Sanford and they are not full. They have not filled all of their teaching positions, but we have. So Thank, you, Denise. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. No, 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 no. <laughs> So Jen, I believe added, I'm I'm looking at, I believe she added a little um, so next to the name of the candidate that we're bringing forward. I think she added some of those things that I often mention, mm -hmm. um, just hoping that that's, you know, just something that you can look at ahead of time if you want it. Mm -hmm. So th again, these are nominations for teaching anybody under the teacher's agreement. So we have Alania Betts. For, and we have to, sorry, we have to do this individually. <laughs> so, Alania Beck. Can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, contractually, um, seniority matters, right? So, are these listed according, like, to how they apply? Like, how, how do they get listed? All of these new, hi yeah, all of these new hires are official September 1st. Yeah. Regardless of if they were hired yeah. in June or last yeah. yesterday. Their contracts oh, just yeah. in case they were, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Alania Betts, um, Noble High School Math. So she um, graduated from Southern New Hampshire University and was teaching at Lewiston Middle School. And we need a motion, a motion, motion and, and a second. second. And a second. second. All in favor? Who is our motion? I'm sorry. I got the second. Yeah, was it Nancy? Okay, thank you. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. So then we have Emma Gagney for Noble High School Biology, and she is coming from a uh, private sector workforce. Do you have a motion? I'll make the motion for Emma Gagney for the biology teacher. And second? I'll second. All in favor? Okay. Good. Good. Last name. Bridget De Benedetto. That's it. De Benedetto. Thanks. Good. You got it. Noble High School, speech and language. Um, graduated from Worcester State College and was working down in Andover Public School District. Do we need a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. She brings cookies. She does. She makes cookies. <laughs> we had the new <laughs> pizza orientation <laughs> the past two days. Yeah, she's she's a speech therapist. That's what that last day. <laughs> yeah. It's a little yeah. much for it the is. I think she's Miss B. Miss B. Okay. All right. Colin Benham, Noble High School Social Studies. He graduated from USM and was most recently at Thornton Academy. I made the motion for Colin Benham. I'll second. Okay. Okay. And Lindsay Libby, Noble Middle School, grade seven math. She graduated from Plymouth State University and was working at Ossipee Central School. Make a motion. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Okay. And then Kella Silas, Noble Middle School health teacher. She um, graduated from the University of New Hampshire and she um, had her student teaching experience at ha Hampton Academy in Hampton, New Hampshire. So this is her first foray. Second. I'll say. All in favor? Okay. Sarah Spaulding, Noble Middle School Excel teacher. She um, graduated from the State University of New York and was most recently at the Corner School Stone School in New Hampshire. Is this school time? Yes, Excel. Yes. Okay. from the middle school. Yeah. Motion. I think the motion for Sarah Spalding. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? I'm giving that one to Josh. I heard him first. <laughs> Crystal Childress, 
this is interesting. She um, is being nominated for the kindergarten teacher in North Berwick, um, but we have a kindergarten teacher named Barbara Childress yeah. at Hussey School. Yeah. So, oh, and, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. and they're not related that yeah. we can find and figure out. So uh, again, North Berwick Elementary School, she graduated from Western Governors University, and she was most recently at Moses Lake School District in Washington State. And she was hired, yes, two days ago. Wow. Coming all the way. She, they, we, she grew up in Rollinsford. Oh. And she just recently, very recently moved back. Yeah. Approved. Uh, sorry, I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Good question on that one. Yes. To the other school, I just I just saw that the other night that is because North Carolina had explosive enrollment last moment for kindergarten. They, yep. had a teacher. they did. Did that happen at the other school? It happened at Hussey. Okay. And it happened in Lebanon in June. So we've already acted on that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, the next one's Wendy Smith for North Berwick Elementary School, grade four. She graduated from Lesley University. She was in, she and her family relocated to York last year or the year before, but prior to that, her most of her experiences in Boston public schools. So um, motion to approve. All second. All in favor? Okay, Megan Talbot, Vivian Hussey, school, um, second grade. She graduated from the University of Maine prior to, well, prior to this nomination, she was in North Berwick doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, she was working as a substitute. She filled in long-term sub jobs. She was filled in for the school counselor a couple years ago. So she's uh, worn many hats. Um, so a motion for that. Motion. All right, second. I'll second it. All in favor? I can tell that. It is. Okay. Yep. So Julius Carr is for Vivian Hussey School, grade kindergarten, and that's the additional kindergarten. Um, so she graduated from Colby Sawyer College. This is her first teaching. Make the motion. A second. All in favor? Okay. This was a recent hire as well. Carrie Fleming, Hussey School nurse. Uh, she graduated from Noble. And um, she graduated from USM, and she's currently working the third shift, yeah. the overnight shift at Douglas, at yeah. Douglas yeah. Hospital. So oh. she attended orientation the other day after coming and off today. of her. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, she was tired. Yeah, she was a little she's tired. She's great. It's going to be great. Yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Okay. Shannon Smith. Hanson School Special Education teacher. She graduated from USM. She worked for Child Development Services. She also graduated from Noble. She, uh, from what I understand, she graduated the year before this building. Yeah. Opened. She's the last graduating class of the yeah. old building. Yeah. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Lexi Dalton, Lebanon Elementary School, grade four, and she graduated from Thomas College. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? So we have Aisha Namey. That's yep, yep. That's it. Yep. MHA clinical advisor, um, University of Denver, and she was most recently running um, a program in Sanford at the Sanford School District Special Education Program. She's primarily um, going to be helping us with transitions, transitions out for um, ELOs in from MHA, but also transitioning and support back to Noble High School. Yellow yeah, extended learning. Yes. yes, thank you. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Trying. Get all those after I'm yeah. trying. Yeah. I'm trying. We try not to do that too. So. <laughs> do we have a motion? Motion and second. I'll second. All in favor? Okay, the last one was um, I received a phone call at two o'clock this afternoon from Heather, Heather LaFrance. So it's Heather LaViolet um, not being nominated for Excel for Lebanon. Um, she is a former Lebanon kindergarten teacher who left for a couple of years and was working in Kennebunk and is um, was interested in this Excel position. It's part time. So Heather LaViolet. Make the motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? 
And we have one more that needs a motion in a second, and that is the resignation for Chris Sokoko um, from MHA. He's uh, the social studies teacher at MHA. Mm -hmm. the rest of ed techs. Yes, and you don't need to make a. Okay. Motion to approve. No second. All in favor? Sorry, motion to approve. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. And then I second it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And all in favor. Okay, and these are the ed techs that we have had resignations for for a variety of reasons. Some has have received teaching positions, some have relocated, um, some have been woo, you know, wooed away. Woo yes, exactly. <laughs> some can go work for more money in right. a less stressful environment. So does that what kind of a opening what kind of a, a gap does this make we still have a gap with ed techs we still are about down seven down seven right but as sue said she was in a meeting in yes. sanford yep. and they're down teachers and techs so and he asked me not to raise because they had to like increase their pay he said please don't oh, go so anywhere the, the <laughs> chris Coco, is that is that another uh Position we need to fill now? Nope, we're or, we're, uh, we're good. Right, so I can read that one off too. That yeah. is Matt. No, Jack. I know. Yeah, it's William Jack Hahn. Yeah, um, and he is currently at MHA, but it will be he's math. Moved. Yeah, he's moving. Right, so to math. Sir. He's moving from an ed tech position into a teaching position. Okay. So, so we do need that. We do yeah. need that. Yeah, Mister. Yeah, yeah. Right. Jack Hahn. We can do that. It'd be great if we could do that. Yeah. Okay. We'll make motion with the motion. All second. All in favor? Sorry. That was a step. Really that's the okay. list. Yes, I think that's the end of the list. Okay. And yes. we have next yes. superintendent yes. update. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think the next board meeting will be oh, larger okay. because yeah. that's when yeah. we're in session. Uh, okay. okay. Good. So just a few quick things. Uh, we had our three days of new teacher, new st staff teaching um, orientation. We have 35 teachers, which is lower than the last couple of summers. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're getting our momentum back, mm -hmm. our feet under us again after coming out of COVID. Uh, it was a great group. It was a smaller elementary group and a larger upper element, you know, mm -hmm. upper high school, middle school group. Um, so a lot of what we worked on, we had like Officer Fogg come in and do work around safety in the schools. He'll come up with some, you know, further information at the school level. But we did an orient, you know, just an overview of the district. Uh, we had a bagels and bus tour this morning, we so did. that our teachers could all see them. all of the all of the schools. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? We talked about the academics, technology, special education, 504, classroom management, lesson planning, all of just those pieces that are important for for us. A couple of other updates: athletics. I am going to here it is. We are running already our fall sports. There's all there are 330 student athletes signed up to play fall sports, and that's one third of the entire nine through 12 student population. Our regular season games begin at the end of next week for all teams. And um, this is just a, something Aaron wanted me to add too. the Noble High School Athletic Hall of Fame will be introduced this school year. A submission form will be sent out to the community in the upcoming weeks for the inaugural introductions induction ceremony that will take place in March. A committee will decide criteria and start vetting applicants in September. So that's a new. <laughs> and then for transportation, I am very pleased because we often have conversations about drivers. Yeah. Um, I'm very pleased to note that we have a flex driver position that is open. And other than that, we are good. Okay. Um, that took a lot of work. We did have an interview today and it was promising, but that candidate has an interview in another district tomorrow. So <laughs> just, we're really hoping that we're hoping that the charm to answer it to the surrounding or it is, it is. Yeah. yes yes or more than surrounding right. district mm -hmm. the other thing we had a two day administrative workshop august 8th and 9th that was very productive we talked a lot about our teacher evaluation process we always have a lot of conversation rich conversation around that the teacher um 
we had Research for Better Teachers in last year to work with our administrative team on the evaluation process because we had some changes and turnovers with our administrators. Mm -hmm. And we really looked at The Skillful Teacher, which is a really good um, conceptual book. And so how to kind of work through and calibrate our evaluation so we're consistent. And um, we talked about space and facilities and the strategic plan. So those were our big pieces. The other thing I just wanted to make sure is we sent out a district notification with the, a couple of them. We, we sent um, school nutrition, a school nutrition document out, and then we're sending out the newsletters before school, we think. So um, <laughs> if you have not received, if you did not receive the school nutrition letter, that means that you haven't been yet signed up to receive district communication. So if you want to have that, please let me know so that we can get you on the list to get those district communications that go out. Okay. Do you think we should be on that? That's I think it helps. I think it's super helpful. Yeah. Yes, it would have been. See what's going out. Can, yes. can we just be put on? I mean, that's yes, we will. Yeah. Yeah. We want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Um, question about that, yes. actually. And it was, it came up in a conversation recently sure. with Tom, um, about this topic. They were saying, oh, yeah, well, <clears throat> it's mandated by the state of Maine now, like it's put into legislation, that lunch and breakfast are provided at no cost. That, am I correct to understand, that does not mean that the state is paying for everything that we still have to. Like the state didn't just say we're doing this and we're paying for all of it, did they? Okay, so that's still in our, right. they at least yeah, have for another funding right. in our budget. Another, right. Some clarification. Right. Okay, because I do feel like this letter is misleading. It doesn't clarify that. I don't, I think it was okay. confusion in the first place, not okay. yeah. to this district by yeah. any okay. means. Um, it was just kind of a conversation because like, I don't know oh, why I'm paying okay. for this. I think they just said that we have to get to do it. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there is, there is some subsidy that goes with yeah. it. So I think we can, we can have, like, right. yeah, but we can have, um, awesome. okay. yeah, we yes. can have uh, Abby be a little more clear yeah. in terms of yeah. what the, what the yeah. situation was. So is that, yeah. is that a recent decision, legislative yeah. decision? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that yeah. goes with some of the stuff for the budget as well, where people were misunderstanding our recent I think dilemmas with it's paid for, it's free money, and it, yeah. it's not. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, I think that it doesn't mean that they're also paid. Exactly. Right. exactly. Right, well, that's we got used to it during COVID. Yeah. I mean, that was the issue, right? Mm -hmm. These COVID the funds, they, they get COVID funds districts, it's just like, oh, yeah, we'll just pay for, for and then legislative, oh, just so. So okay. Do we have any, any other? Other. <laughs> I did one question just about, you mentioned um, the hall, the athletic hall of fame. Um, is that the only hall of fame that Noble has currently? Currently? Yes. Is it in the works to do an academic hall of fame, a, an arts hall of fame, um, other? Because certainly athletics is not the only thing that Noble celebrates. Right. right. We have a military hall of fame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm trying to remember when it was Thank started and who's. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So those folks that, you know, students that have moved into the military roles, we've been. Do some well. distinction or something along those yeah. lines. Like I just, mm -hmm. yeah. if we're going to do it athletically, I, I think it's important sure. to recognize that our athletes are not the be on and all people. Mm -hmm. There are unbelievable artists in our district, yeah. um, musicians, uh, theater, and then no, that and people going. Get on that, it's stuck, yeah. <laughs> well, they definitely need mission in the artist. Careers in, yeah. in, you know, and I think that you know, yeah. we're highlighting those. If we're going to do an athletic one, I would love to see us make sure that we have in the works. I'm not saying they all need to be done at the same time, but that we can say to our community, athletics is not more important than anything else. It is one of the ways mm -hmm. we celebrate. Right. Our and this has taken a couple of years, so it will take time, like you yeah. said. It's yeah. great. It's all said. in the works. Yep. Okay. Um, yes. okay. Sorry, I was under the understanding and reading through some um, Facebook things about Noble that we have a coach who got an award. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, as well as a student. I no, guess. hold on. I'm going to try. I, it, Kevin Gray, I think. Yes, I believe. Yes. Wrestling. Yep. And, yep. yep. and they actually yesterday they put the names of the state, the right. kiddos that hit the state championships on the belt. Right. That's in the okay. yesterday. Yes. Yes. That. Great honor. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yes. We did highlight that in the last newsletter in June. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have other also. Um, so the, the monthly school activity uh, attachment that was in one of these, <laughs> this spreadsheet. So these open houses, these are open houses for anybody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and I don't know, NMS, is that Knowlton Middle School? It's the Noble Middle, Middle School. Noble. Noble. Oh, okay. So it's Noble. Which one is the Knowlton School? The Knowlton School. Is, uh, maybe the Elks. LKS. The yeah. LKS. Yeah. That's the oh. Elkdale Knowlton School. Oh, okay. Because I thought his name started with an N, I mean with a K. Yep. So I so it doesn't make any sense. Yep. Okay. And then Vivian Huss, he, there was another one, NBES. North Berwick Elementary School. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I don't think about North Berwick. And one thing we did on that document, that was something that um, the board had asked for. Uh, so every month, every couple of weeks, it will be refreshed by the buildings so that hopefully you will have it in live time. We just put the link in for athletics. We are, cannot keep track of that as far as if a game is rained out, like we don't, we don't want to have everybody rely on that document, it's easier to just click on their mm -hmm. click on their site and yes. their page and see real mm -hmm. the real schedules. Okay, I have one. Mm -hmm. All that I see is pictures on here for athletics. Anyways. <laughs> what is MHA? Mary Hart Academy. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure, that makes total sense. I just have one comment to make. Mm -hmm. After having two children who were a year apart, um, sometimes it's a little hard, even though you give them an hour, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to get to both of your kids yeah. in two separate schools, especially if one's in, like, say, a Berwick's, a, mm -hmm. uh, yes, a, a school in Berwick, and one is at the Noble. Right. High school Excellent. or even the middle school, mm -hmm. I know that that's in Berwick, but it's right. hard to make yes. that hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the same day, and I know they right. have those. I'm just using yes. those examples, but it's hard to make those. Right, and Hussey and Knowlton varied it by a half hour. Yeah. I so see. We need to so, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my others are just that North Berwick had elementary had um, a pop principal event with a new principal, so everyone got to come up to the playground. Who was able to make it and meet her, and PTO provided obstacles for that. Um, so it was just a fun night. Borrowed games from the library, so lawn games and all the things. Um, and then I was curious if there were any names in the hat for a student or student representative. You have one that's a potential. Okay. Yes. yes. Um, we're still working then, on another. Okay. So, perfect. And then someone touched upon it. Um, the town boxes that Stephanie had put in mm -hmm. place are still active in each town. Right. I don't remember who did you get the keys for Lebanon? I believe Nancy. Oh, but that is, that's nothing been in it yet. So. Okay. So I just didn't. Because I was doing the North Berwick one. Um, I didn't remember the regularity that we're supposed to check the boxes. You guys probably don't know anything about these. Basically, um, Stephanie came up with the idea of like her grandparent wanted to ask the school board a question um, or the school district a question. They're not online, they don't do things online, but they tend to go into the town hall. So each, she made boxes and did a whole thing um, with flyer or questionnaires. Um, so each town now has one in their town hall that anyone can go in and put questions in. Um, that we were checking, was it for the second, second meeting, meeting of each month? Yeah. Okay. We're free to go beyond that one. Okay. So and who's checking for work? I am. Okay. I, and I have to say, when I went, when I've gone in, and they have said that they haven't had a whole lot of <laughs> takers, they suggested putting it the Berwick, at least, at the library. So you don't have to ask anybody's permission mm -hmm. to move it to the library. They just felt that the library is a place where seniors might even yeah. tend to go more because I know they offer some different mm -hmm. activities. So mm -hmm. if, if you don't mind, I would I want no to approach sense. the library and ask them. I have no um, strong opinions. I don't know if anyone else has. I don't know if how many uh, senior citizens will love it. Right. I, I, I think they have a yoga stuff. I should know. Yeah, I'm I was in but I don't. But I don't know. The library. Yeah, the library. Yeah, I thought, yeah, they have a library. That's yeah, true. Yeah, they, they have a lot going on. Yeah. I, I, that I do know. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to give it a try. And that was, yeah, it was people at the town hall that suggested it. Yeah. So yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's I thought it was nice enough. 
Okay, um, last uh, next on the agenda is public input. Do we have any? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Uh, and the next item is an executive session. Yes. Right. So yes. I make a motion to go into executive session. Santa on an RFA 4056A employment of officials slash 20 slash employees. I'll talk about it. All right. So oh, sorry. Nope, it's okay. Uh, it's reading. Um, no new business will be conducted conducted after this executive session, and so we can end the recording at that point.